So my reason for going to Haridwar uh, in 2009 was quite personal. I was about to have my first child. I was seven months pregnant. You know, I grew up in the U.S., in the southern United States, where children in my school would have their family histories written on the inside of Bibles. They knew that, you know, such and such great-grandfather fought in the Civil War or such and such World War. You know, my mother didn't even have a birth certificate. My father was a partition refugee. And so I never felt this sense that I had a family history. I didn't really know where we belonged. And so I had heard that, you know, you could go to Haridwar and sort of look at your family history, at least, you know, kind of find the people who keep your records. My name is Anu Anand. I was born in Jammu in India, um, but my parents emigrated to the U.S. when I was very young. So when I was a year old, I went to New York City and grew up in the U.S. And then basically when I was about 20-ish after university, I wanted to work as a journalist and I ended up back in Delhi in 1996 and I met my husband there who's English. So now I live in England, so I, I sort of straddle three continents. So the journey was kind of blind, you know, as I say, we drove up to Haridwar, I went to the evening prayers, which I've been to before and I really enjoyed that, it was very beautiful, but I had no clue where to start. I was walking around saying, Anand's Raul Pindi, Anand's Raul Pindi, and you know, people would, sometimes the pandas would stop me and say, okay, you know, come in, let me check, and then it would turn out to be a false lead. And then I was starting to get desperate because I thought I'm going to fail, I'm going to leave without finding this. And eventually I rang my dad um, and he was halfway across the world in Florida. And I told him the whole story and I said, where is your family's priest? <laughs> he just kind of scratched his head in his sleep and he said, all I remember is that there was a giant tree. That's all he told me. <laughs> just remember thinking, a giant tree, this is India, there are millions of trees, where, where am I gonna find this? I didn't understand what he was saying. And I restarted the search the next morning, again, kind of wandering through the bazaar, and finally, I said it again, and a man behind me, he was just a bystander, and he tapped me on the shoulder, and I turned around, and he said, I know this tree. And I followed him, and he took me through some alleyways to this, big door and we opened the door into a courtyard and there in the middle of the courtyard was not just any tree it was a banyan tree and I thought this must be it and as luck would have it when I knocked on the door and spoke to the man inside he was our family's banda he remembered my father he knew his name he knew he was in Florida and that was it jackpot He proceeded to show me everything, and he also put me in touch with my mother's family's banda. And that was it. I spent the whole day delving into this family history. So he was able to give me some contours of what my family was and where they fit into society. He had loads and loads of these long paper scrolls wrapped in fabric, and he was able to show me family records going back 10 generations. And I just thought that was extraordinary. We are here in Haridwar. And our work is to pray for all our lives. From the birth of the child, and from the birth of the child, all our work is to pray for all our lives. So this is what we believe in here, that you come to your life, you can see your life, and see your life, and do all your work for your life. So we can do all our work for you.
संबत अठारह सौ क्या इक्कीस इसमें से फिफ्टी सेवन लेस कर लो अठारह सौ इक्कीस में से फिफ्टी सेवन लेस कर लो तो इसका सन निकल आएगा इससे भी पुराना है हमारे पास में साढ़े चार सौ साल तक के लोगों के पास रिकॉर्ड है हमारे पंडो के आमतौर से दस ग्यारह पीढ़ी का रिकॉर्ड निकल आता है इसमें से मेरा नाम तीर्थरोहित उज्ज्वल पंडित है जब भगवान राम लंका पर विजय करने के बाद और रावण का वध करने के बाद तब वो विभिन्न तीर्थों पर पश्चाताप करने के लिए निकले तो जहाँ जहाँ तीर्थ पर जाकर उन्होंने श्राद्ध कर्म किया और उनको कराने वाले जो ब्राह्मण थे जब वो लौटकर अपने परिवारों में गए उनके परिवारों ने उन ब्राह्मणों को स्वीकार करने से मना कर दिया चूँकि भगवान राम को ब्रह्म हत्या कहा गया रावण एक ब्राह्मण थे ऐसी जब विषय भगवान श्री राम के पास आया तब उन्होंने जिन जिन तीर्थों पर जाकर जिन ब्राह्मणों ने ये सब कार्य कराया था उनको सर्वोच्च ब्राह्मण की उपाधि अर्थात तीर्थ पुरोहित की उपाधि कि जो भी तीर्थ पर आएगा आपकी आज्ञा से ही सभी धर्म रिलेटेड कार्य किए जाएंगे तभी से ही मान्यताएँ चली आ रही हैं जब व्यक्ति आता है पहले हम उससे पूछते हैं उसका गांव क्या है उसके बाद पूछेंगे गांव से आप कौन सी जाति के हो उस जाति के बाद पूछेंगे कौन सा गोत्र है गोत्र के बाद पता लगेगा कि कौन से गांव कौन सी जाति कौन से गोत्र का व्यक्ति कहां पर बैठा है फिर उसकी हम भाई निकालेंगे उसको परिवार का दिखाएंगे कि आपके परिवार से इतने वर्ष पहले ये आए थे कि आप इसको कन्फर्म करते हैं वो सेटिस्फाई होगा कि हाँ ये ही मेरे परिवार के सदस्य हैं फिर हम उसके बाद उसका जो काम है वो पूजा कर्म इत्यादि कराते हैं गंगा में स्नान करते हैं वो उसके बाद फिर यहाँ आकर ही दान दक्षिणा और ये सब लिखाई सारा काम करते हैं ये पीढ़ी दर पीढ़ी चलने वाली परंपराएं हैं मेरी फर्म का नाम है मक्खन लाल चक्खन लाल तो मैं उसकी तीसरी पीढ़ी हूँ जो अंदाजा है लगभग चार सौ ऐसी गद्दियाँ हैं जो हमारे कार्यालय हैं और परिवार लगभग ढाई हज़ार परिवार हैं जो इस कार्य से जुड़े हुए हैं और एवरेजन आप लगाएं तो लगभग ढाई हज़ार परिवार के हिसाब से दस हज़ार लोगों का पालन पोषण होता है दस से पंद्रह हज़ार लोगों का उन्होंने जो सी बी आई को बयान दिया था उन्होंने कहा था की हमें नहीं पता की हमारी बेटी किस समय मरी और किस तारीख को मरी और यहाँ वो भई में वो लिखवा के गए थे कि उनकी बेटी की डेथ की डेथ क्या है और समय क्या है मान के चलिए महीने में एक दो तीन लोग आते हैं जिनको इस चीज़ की ज़रूरत पड़ती है जिसमें अपना उनको पुराना रिकॉर्ड चाहिए होता है ये साबित करने के लिए कि हम इस परिवार से संबंधित हैं और हमारे परिवार वाले हमें हिस्सा नहीं दे रहे हैं या भाइयों में कई बार पार्टीशन का सूट फाइल हो जाता है कुछ फैमिलीज बाहर रह रही हैं गाँव देहात से अलग रह रही हैं उनके नाम नहीं होते हैं गाँव वगैरह में तो वहाँ पर भी ये काम आता है रिकॉर्ड हमारा बहुत से स्टेट्स में स्टेट सर्टिफिकेट बनता है तो जो पुराने डॉक्यूमेंट्स हैं जैसे हमारे यहाँ उनका सौ साल का रिकॉर्ड है तो वो स्टेट सर्टिफिकेट बनवाने में भी काम होता है जैसे आप इसे अगर एग्जाम्पल के तौर पे लें तो धारा 370 हटने से पहले जम्मू में स्टेट सर्टिफिकेट बनता था अब उसकी नीड नहीं है मगर पहले लोग जम्मू में स्टेट सर्टिफिकेट बनवाते थे तो वहाँ पे ये काम आता था तो हम यहाँ उनका थोड़ा सा हेल्प हो जाती है भाई एज एन लॉयर एफिडेविट वगैरह बनवा के देते हैं उनको यहाँ से कि भाई ये व्यक्ति पिछले सौ या डेढ़ साल से जम्मू में ही रह रहे हैं और नॉर्मली जम्मू के ही रेजिडेंस में रहते हैं This was 2009, and maybe the last entry had been made by my father, maybe a decade before, right? So, here I was in in the middle of Haridwar, in this ancient, ancient city, and so I made my entry. And what do you put down? You know, I put down my name, I put down my husband's name, and I put down my email address because, you know, that is the way to contact. And I remember writing my email address and then thinking, this is bizarre. This is probably the first email address. And I think for me. that at least fulfills a very basic human impulse to at least 
know the names of the people, even if I don't know what they did for a living, what they were like, what they loved, what their hobbies were. I don't have those details. I don't know. हाँ जी बिल्कुल जी अपना सनातन धर्म है इनकी जानकारी बच्चों को होनी चाहिए जी जीवन के अंदर अगर सनातन धर्म को अगर बढ़ावा नहीं देंगे तो किसको बढ़ावा देंगे जी सनातन धर्म व सर्वप्रथम धर्म है जी इनको मानेंगे अगर हम मानेंगे तो हमारे बच्चे भी मानेंगे आगे आने वाली हर पीढ़ी मानेगी इनको इसलिए साथ लाए कि इनको भी पता चले हमारा कैसे कैसे करते हैं कल को इनको भी आए हमारा भी नंबर आएगा ऐसी कोई और है ये हमारा एक पैतृक कार्य है घर से एक व्यक्ति इस कार्य को हमेशा करेगा ही करेगा क्योंकि ये हमारी धरोहर है कहा जाता है कि हमारे यहाँ इसी से हम बड़े हुए हैं इसी से हमारा परिवार चला है इसी से हमारा परिवार पलता है तो इसलिए ये कार्य करना तो एक जने के लिए अनिवार्य है देखिए जो पहले बड़े बुजुर्ग लोग थे वो अपनी इस चीज को मान्यता देते थे आज थोड़ा सा समय ये है कि आज दुकानें बहुत सारी हो गई हैं धर्म बहुत सारे हो गए हैं तो आदमी ये कलयुग है कलयुग में क्या होता है चाल होती है जिधर सो आदमी चल रहे हैं ना उनके पीछे आदमी चलेगा चौखाई में गिर रहे हैं और जो सत्य की तरफ अगर चार आदमी चल रहे हैं उनकी तरफ नहीं जाएगा क्योंकि सत्य की तरफ कटना ही है ये जो हमारा कर्म है धर्म है ये हमारा सनातनी है आजकल आदमी जो है वो दूसरे के उसमें व्यवसाय में ज़्यादा ही जाना चाहता है कि किसी को गुरु बना लिया उनकी माला कर रहे हैं अपने माता पिता को नहीं पूज रहे हैं लेकिन उनको पूज रहे हैं भी पीछे ही कुछ समय पहले मेरे पास एक कपूर फैमिली से आए हुए थे तो वो कनाडा थे उनके दो बच्चे भी सब कनाडा में ही हुए हैं वो फर्स्ट टाइम इंडिया आए थे तब उनको बताया गया कि आपके ग्रांड ग्रैंडफादर के साइन है तो देख के भावुक हो गए उन्होंने कभी सोचा भी नहीं था अपने सपने में there has been a turn in the age people are now maintaining not records in writing they are maintaining records in instagram archives so i am jason johns i teach at the department of ancient indian history culture and archaeology at st javier's college uh, i have completed my bachelor's masters and my phd in this particular subject the profession of keeping records is rather old but not that old so we have a record keeping style since say vedic literature wherein a father is making okay. mention of his father while giving donations but it doesn't go more than that we have epic literature which talks about the yugas etc which gives a genealogy of say a dashavatar scenario we also have puranas which enlists entire kings so these particular details or these vamshavalis charitas or genealogical records usually go back to around 2000 2500 years with a good amount of ambiguity it starts in the royal circles because that is where it is important these records play an important role for legitimizing royalty it's not necessary for common people to have these records but as you know it is always important for say a family to know their history specifically in land bifurcations everyone wants to know where they have come from and it is necessary to do that usually for lower sections of society it becomes slightly impossible to fund and maintain these records so we know for a fact that these records are maintained by persons who have a good amount of disposable income say a middle class of the previous generation these people would keep these records in safe places what are the safe places of the time and age of course it would be the temples it would be the pandits it would be the local repositories of knowledge in this case also religion so that is where these records would be my first interaction with these people who keep these genealogical uh, records was when a cousin of mine went there when my uncle died and he even photocopied some you know records and brought them back uh, that's when the idea came to my mind that uh, just see if i can try and sort of make out some kind of a family tree or trace my genealogy back as see how far i could go haridwar is 
maybe the most prominent center of uh, these records but not the only one there is a place called pehova near kurukshetra i am told that there also there are a lot of records family records then in mutton in kashmir now people used to go there and before trouble started we should go from srinagar to pehalgam there is a stop in this place and there is a temple there and the pandas there they you know people used to get down chat with them and they used to record who has come and who gone you know a similar kind of family record they maintain there so with the turn of the tide usually new documentation methodologies come in force the profession is dying because it has not been able to take a full step into the future hence people are not able to earn enough from keeping these records or maintaining these records you see that maintaining books pothis etc are very very tedious very very expensive okay because you're not just taking care of the pothis you require an interpreter to find you require a competent librarian or so and so you also require space which requires cash which people are not ready to pay so it is necessary for these records and this profession to step into the digital age but it will affect the profession if everything is put online and there is no one to translate interpret and bring these records to the current and future generation the best approach should be that there should be a group of individuals who come together who can still continue the tradition but with a digital know how each and every individual has a responsibility for their own history their own narrative so it is very important nonetheless for each of us to take it into the hands of our own selves to document our history it is also in the hands of say government and non governmental agencies specifically those in touch with the heritage space to take up this particular project I think digitizing records and having some way for Indians who are spread around the world to have a digital link is is also important because it helps you start the search. Honestly for me the thrill was meeting these men um because they had had contact with my family down the line, you know. And the thrill was in hearing the stories and the thrill was in seeing the physical handwriting and the physical entries made. That was the thrill. The thrill was in the shared thread the continuity um and so i think it's enormously important and i and i'm i'm sitting here saying this to you and kind of feeling guilty because my goodness what have i contributed to their livelihood you know how are they going to survive but i hope they do because for me that journey and finding those two people was like the missing piece right in the center of my life's puzzle right and how would i feel if i didn't have that you know that would be a tragedy